interview on the 17th of December 2016 for Our Roots, Our Journey, Our City. So first of all, can you tell me your name and when and where you were born? My name is Abdul Rafiq. Uh, my nickname is Ashik Mia. I'm born in Bangladesh, Silet. I came in England in 1976. Right. Um, when, were you, when were you born? Can I ask? I'm born in 15th of March, 1964. Right. Um, and you were born in Silet? Born in Silet. Uh, in Saidpur? Well, I'm next to next village. Right. My address is uh, Ludurpur. Village is Ludurpur. Right. Jagannathpur, Silet. Right. Um, could you could you describe the village where you grew up? Well, it was uh, like a agricultural village, mm -hmm. but my dad was uh, working for British ship in period of that time. A, a ship? A sh for British ship. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, he, he was coming to Manchester and Liverpool and everything, and that's how he, he stayed in this country. Okay. After when he finished, uh, well, when he thought he's, he's, he's going to move somewhere else, then he thought, okay, I'll move in England. Right. And that's how he came to England. Um. So when, when did he move to England? Oh, that was, I think, um, 1958 or 60, before I born. Right. Yeah. So what, you just live with your mother and? Yeah, I was living, well, um, back home I was living with my mother and my brother and sisters. Right. Can you tell me about your brothers and sisters? Yeah, we have um, four brothers and two sisters. Right. Yeah. Um, my three brothers are living in this country. Right. Yeah. Um, and was your mother working? No, my mother wasn't working. She was a housewife. Right. And so did your, was your dad sending you money back from his job? It used to be, yes. To support you? Yeah. yeah. Then he decided to he's going to bring us over in this country. Right. Did, he, did you, your family have any other sources of income? Agricultural income. Agriculture. Yeah. Uh, what, what sort of agriculture? So growing rice and vegetables right. and things. Yeah. Right. Did you go to school in Bangladesh? Yes, I did. What, what did you study? Well, it's a Bengali study. Right. Yeah. Actually, it's a Bengali school in Bakum, so right. I was studying in school and I was in uh, class three uh, before I came in this country. Right. In our country, it's a uh, count like a class one, class two, class three. In this country, you know, you, you go with your age. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was Bengali studies. Bengali was, studies. was that language? Um, also Bengali language, yeah. Language. A any other subjects? Yeah. Well, I was in th uh, class three. I was a young boy, so I wasn't taking the any other subject that right. time. Yeah. Um, and then when when did you move to the UK? In 1976. And did your m mother and your brothers and sisters move with you as well? Uh, my sisters wasn't known, just right. uh, four brothers. Your four brothers? Yeah. And wh where did you first move to? We moved, uh, came into Leeds. Right. And after a few months, um, my dad passed away. Okay. And we left our older brother back home. So my mom decided she wants to go back home. So she went back home after about five, about five, six months, and I moved into Sunderland. Okay. Yeah. So you, how long were you in Leeds? About five, six months. Well, what did you think when you moved to Leeds? It was, was okay, nice. Yeah. yeah. Were people welcoming? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah people were welcoming. And what did you do? 
Well, I wasn't doing anything that time. I was, uh, I was underage. Right. Yeah. So did you go to school or anything? Well, um, I did went to school about three months in Leeds. Right. Yeah. And why did you move to Sunderland? Because I have uh, one of the relatives living in Sunderland, so I came to live with him. And he had a business in Sunderland, so I thought I can uh, have a, like a small part-time job. And I can also go to his school as well. Could I ask how you, uh, who your relative was? Um, his name is Mr. Ulla. Right. Um, and so did you got a job working with him? Well, I was just uh, working part time. Right. Part time. Yeah. Right. What did you think of Sunderland? Um, it was really nice yeah. when I moved into Sunderland was really feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, the people of Sunderland who, was, who I was living with them, they all, I knew them, like they're all from, most of them from Sudfur, which is my next village, and my mom from the same village. So most of the people I know from background. So I was like feeling like a home. Right. Yeah. Um, were there any difficulties? No, there was no difficulties. What about language? Was well, I, I wasn't uh, speaking very good English that time, so um, I was uh, going part-time in school as well, and I'm trying to pick up the language, and I had a help to pick up my language. Right. So that's how I, like, through, I pick up my language. Right. How, how long did it take you to learn? Um, it was, you know, it took, it took uh, quite a while, you know, it's, you know, when you are learning a different language, it, it, it takes time. But I was gradually picking it up. And what were the people of Sunderland like? It was nice, yeah. good, yeah. Fantastic, I had no problem at all. I was, I was living happily. Do you remember what you did outside of work? Well, that time, um, I used to play sometimes uh, football. Um, there wasn't much things to do that time. There was no um, white lifting and things that time. So we used to practicing uh, playing sometimes football. Was, was that your favorite hobby? It was my favorite hobby, yes. Yeah. Um, and then did you get married? Yes, then I got married. Well, before I married, I was living all over North East as well, uh, apart from Sunderland. I moved for a little while in Newcastle, okay. and then I come back to um, Washington, which is city of Sunderland, uh, from 83, I was living in Washington. Then I opened a business in Washington in 87. My own, I started my own business, and then I went. Then I married to my wife in '89, five, six, '89, and we was living in Washington that time, me and my wife, and I find really fantastic in Washington. It's so nice. It's like village type town then, small village. I was living in uh, Washington Village, mm -hmm. which is everybody drive. Um, was bushes around everywhere. Was I was really, you know, so cozy. I, I, I love to live in Washington back again. <laughs> yeah. Well, why did you move to Newcastle? Just for a job. For a job. It was for a short period of time. Right. And then you yeah. moved to Washington. Yeah, I right? moved to back to Washington. Yeah. And then gradually I had my first daughter in 1992. And now I've got uh, five children. Um, I have a second child in 96, my boy. And then I have a third child in 98, which is my daughter. Then my fourth child in 2000, which is my daughter. And then I had 2002, my fifth child, which is my son. Um, they're all uh, 
two, three of them born in Sunderland and two of them born in Bangladesh because we went to Bangladesh for a holiday and we had a long time, long period holiday in Bangladesh between 85, sorry, um, 95 and 99. So in this gap uh, between that time, uh, my son and my daughter born in Bangladesh. So, and we came back to Sunderland again um, from holiday, well, I would say holiday, I had a long period rest in Bangladesh and came back in 99 and I was living since then in Sunderland. Right. How had Bangladesh changed? It's changed a lot. It's changed a lot and it's growing faster now. Um, I was in Bangladesh last year. I took my daughter, older daughter, to get married. So she married in last year back home. And now we're going again on holiday on the 10th of March. I'm, I'm taking my older daughter. She's going to see her husband and my older son going with me as well. So we're going for three weeks. We're going to be back in uh, 2nd of April. Um, do you think Bangladesh has changed for the better? Yeah, it's, it is changed for better. Yeah. It's changed for better and it's, it's, it's moving fast, uh, growing everywhere. People are getting more jobs now. The country is getting developed as well. Yes, it is fast. Uh, fast growing country, one of the fast growing country in the world now, Bangladesh. Um, and you opened a, a business in Washington first? Yes. Oh, what was the business? It was a restaurant. Right. What was it, what was it called? It was called Eastern Style. Right. It was in Spout Lane. It was a part of the miners' welfare building, and I took the one part of the building, okay. and rented out. And opened the restaurant. Then I have opened the takeaway in Washington as well, in Harrington, in 1991. So basically, I had a two business in Washington. Yeah. Then gradually, you know, you have to leave something and then forward somewhere else. So gradually, I've sold the both places one at a time. Right. And then I went to Bangladesh for a to have a bit of rest. And when we went there, we liked it, so we stayed for a little too longer. <laughs> and we came back in, which is 99. Yeah. So you sold the businesses before you moved to Bangladesh? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then what did you do when you came back to Sunday? I, tr I tried to restart an another business in Sunnyside. Right. I opened a restaurant bought a property and opened a restaurant called Rajdani and it didn't work out because I saw on the papers it was saying the sunny side gonna get developed and it's gonna be nice and beautiful so I thought it's a good opportunity to get a place there open a restaurant there because it's gonna get developed that side um, I probably moved too early before the council made the move, I moved before them and it didn't work out for me and our business wasn't that good. So unfortunately, I had to um, bankrupt the business. Um, that was my sad part of my life. Yeah. yeah. Um, but again, I had to move on. <laughs> and after that, um, keep going, moving and moving, and then I got a partnership business, restart again in Durham okay. in 2011. Right. Yeah. So what, what's that business in Durham? It's called Alishan and right. the restaurant. Right. Yeah. Um, at the moment, I'm thinking to sell my share to my partners and I'm going to come out as well from there. Right. Yeah. So what are you thinking of doing? I haven't thought anything else at the moment. My older son, he's 
he's not very keen on working in the Indian restaurant now. He think he's gonna do English job. But if he's if he's you know, if he like to stay in Indian businesses, um, we might uh, go for a small business like a takeaway for further until I get retired. <laughs> How, have you enjoyed working in something? Yes, of yeah. course. Uh, um, I enjoy my job all the time. I enjoy working all the time. Um, because it keeps you fit and also you need money for your life going on. Yeah. Um, do you think something's changed? It did. It has. It, it's changed a lot. It's definitely changed a lot. I um, mean, when we first moved into Sunderland, it it wasn't uh, bridges there. Mm -hmm. There was no winter garden there, mm -hmm. so it it has changed quite a lot. Yeah. Do, do you think it's changed for the better or th for the worse? Well, it did change for better. Mm -hmm. Definitely, it changed for a better. It's looking nice now. It, it's city of Sunderland a lot looks better than the what was before. Right. Yes, definitely yes. Um, and what are your hopes for the future? Well, I'm nearly over 50 now, so my future is not very far away now <laughs> before I get retired. Um, well, as I said, if my son, he wants to carry on in the Indian industry, then I will be uh, looking for another small business, something mm -hmm. like a takeaway. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I don't have very big ambition, you know. Um, I just need uh, something to live my life, that's all. Um, uh, where were you in 1971? Were you, were you in Bangladesh? I was in Bangladesh, yes. Right. Did, you, did you experience the liberation war? Yes, I did. Oh. It's, it's still, I get shocked when I remember about this because um, uh, was my dad was there as well at that time in home. And when we used to hear the Pakistani army coming, then everybody was shaking and things, you know, what's going to be happen? Or are we going to get killed? And things like that, you know. But I was a young boy, little boy, but. I was also afraid of what going on. Um, it was really a disaster for all Bangladeshi people at that time. But um, I think Allah was with us. That's why we very quickly uh, recovered. We got independence. Very short period of time was the war going on only for, I think, about nine or ten months or so, and we um, won the war. And that was really great things uh, because the Pakistani army was doing nasty things with our Bengali people because they was raping women, killing people for nothing. And this is why probably Allah was helping us to win the war so quick. I think it was, it's maybe the first uh, war which um, ended in short period of time. And there was a heavy killing going on. It's not only a, like a, um, a fighting, like just some towns or some cities. It was everywhere. Even they came in through the, all the villages looking for people to kill the people. And my dad and mom, they said, they, they thought they're gonna all gonna get die. They're not gonna survive. But after all, we did survive because Allah was with us and Allah helped us because we was on the right path. They was doing the wrong things. So Allah punished them. Did you? Did you have to do things to protect yourselves? Did you? Well, I was too young yeah. to protect myself. Yeah. Well, what about your parents? Did they? Well, 
he, he cannot much do nothing about it because you know you need a weapons to protect yourself and we we didn't have anything like that you know you know they got all their guns and everything you know you cannot fight uh, with bamboo or a stick in your hand with the guns so he was just you know praying and asking the Allah to help us you know that's all who can do that time how, how did you feel when Bangladesh won the war? That was the happiest moment in my life. That was the happiest moment of my life. Um, do you think Bangladesh improved after it got independence? It has a lot now. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, were, we, we didn't have anything after the war. Mm -hmm. It was nothing in Bangladesh. But now in 2016, and we are we are come out of a lot of things which we used to be a corrupted country in the number three or something about ten years ago, a poorest country. Um, but now I think uh, we come out. We're not even in, in um, top 20 corrupted country in the world. We are not a 10 corrupted country in the Asia. We are out of all these now. So I think it's developed. It, it's getting better. People are getting graduate. People getting you know education and people getting job. Um, and hopefully, if it's keep everything going like this, within another 10 years. Um, will be come out of uh, everything. I think I think Bangladesh will develop, and uh, my 